Welcome back to the Going For It Sim Studio. Today we're gonna to talk about a detailed description of my entire simulator space. This area that I'm in now is actually my garage. I have a three car tandem, which means instead of having three garage doors that you normally see, I have a standard two car garage, but there's a back space that in my house is actually kind of an oversized. It's about 750 square feet. As this project came to life, this space here was my bike shop and my general storage area because we park both of our vehicles inside. So the first step was to build a shed. So out back, I took a space, I did 10 by 12 standard shed, and I got everything out. That allowed me to start with a completely blank slate. So this space is 20 feet deep, it's 13 feet, eight inches wide, and it's 10 feet, eight inches tall. So that gave me almost a perfect setup for a golf simulator. I wanted something that was really immersive. I wanted it to be very luxury and professional looking because I didn't want any of my videos to look like I was out in my garage. But this is really the only space I have besides maybe building an outbuilding in my yard to make this work. So once everything got taken out, I, was at a, I had a completely blank slate, which means it's a concrete floor. So we'll try to do this in a bottom up type fashion. So I'm gonna start with the flooring and we're gonna work our way up through the technology. So the floor starting out is that concrete. I wanted to build it up to match my hitting mat. So that was about one and three quarters inch in height. And yeah, you know, you can get those really cool tiles that connect all together and it's the perfect height. You just lay your grass right on top of it. But I was doing this on some sort of a budget. I, I don't have a lot of money. So I wanted to make this efficient. So I started off with just a basic OSB base and I had to play around a little bit with the different, different heights so that I can get it to, to equal out. So I ended up using a 1932nd inch subfloor and this is a core from the hole I drilled. So you've got the OSB and then I used the interlocking gym floor mat from Amazon. Really cheap and it worked out well. This is half an inch. And then on top of that, I have my Turf Factory Direct Elite Putting Green. So that's got its own thickness. So basically what I did, I started with my Carl's Place Hot Shot 4x9 hitting mat. And that had, it's got about a one, it's, it's realistically one and three quarters inch. It's not quite the full two inch that you'll read in the description. And then I laid that down and I got some samples of OSB that I had from the shed build. And then I took a little bit of that, that Amazon gym mat and I took a cut out of the, of the turf and I laid it next to it and I basically played, a, played around with it to get the height where I wanted it. And so that's where I ended up with this exact bit. So then what I did was I sheeted the entire floor with the OSB and then I cut it to length where I wanted the room to, to stop at that 20 foot mark. And I laid the mat down in the middle and I centered it left to right and then I had it back where about golf's team told me the center of my hitting strip needed to be. Then I outlined it and I took the mat off. I pulled all the OSB back up and I cut those lines out and then I replaced the OSB and it had that perfect fit. It just fit right in that little rectangle. And then I put the rubber floor on top of that and then I did the same thing. I laid that around and I cut the edges out so it was nice and clean on that rectangle. Then I removed the hitting mat laid the turf down, cut it on the outside so that it laid flat and all the way back to where I wanted it in the area. And then I just used a knife and I cut along the wood and it made a perfect rectangle in the turf and that hitting mat sit perfectly flush. So to utilize the floor space even further, I bought two cups online and that were the right height. I think I got one and a quarter inch cups, I think, just to make them sit a little bit under the, under the grass. And um, I just got a, what is it, a four and a half inch hole saw, I think is what it was. And I made a template and some OSB, laid it over, and that kept the hole saw still all the way down to the concrete, pulled the core out, put a couple cups in so I can get up to a 15 foot putt 
without hitting any of my seams. And then I can get a 20 foot putt pretty close if I can go over those seams, which doesn't really seem to bother it too much. I made it, made it pretty flush. And then because I have my fringe, I can even get a little bit of chipping in. Not very far, but it's a little bit of practice. And then towards the back, just for fun, I got some longer grass. I call it Amazon fringe. Just a cheap something that I got off there that was a little bit longer of a turf. Cut a really cool curve in it so that it looked more like a putting green. And then I cut that in and, and nailed that down on the back. So that holds everything in. So then moving up, on one side I have a, it was, it's like a, it was like a three to four inch gap where the drywall stopped and it went into the foundation. Had to fill that in and on the other side the, co the concrete of the foundation went the other way. It actually came out from the wall, kind of like a ledge. So what I did is I took, I took half inch styrofoam uh, insulation, cut it to fit, wrapped it in some extra duck canvas that I had, and then I glued that into, the, into the, those areas to fill it in. I didn't, A, didn't want any exposed concrete because it didn't look very good. I also didn't want any golf balls to bounce off of it. I felt like that was just a really dangerous setup I had. When I had everything built, that was actually the last step that I did, and that really set it apart. It made it go from a really cool looking sim to very professional. And so I was actually really happy with that little detail. It, it was incredibly hard to do. It took me the longest because the, my gap wasn't straight, so I had to like cut it to fit, and then folding it over that corner was, was just kind of a bit difficult. So moving up from there, um, I researched home theater paint and just to eliminate all the glare, I didn't want any glare, I didn't want any light to bounce off of anything, so I ended up with flat paint. Um, I spent a little bit more there and I went to Benjamin Moore and I got, a, I got a flat paint that is as cleanable as you can get flat paint. I did a dark gray for the walls and the ceiling is the blackest black that you can get. I also painted the wall behind the screen, the black, just to eliminate any bounce off light that could come from the projector through the screen. I went to the Carl's Place website and I used Build Your Golf Simulator. It's a really cool tool they have where you put in the dimensions, you select what type of, what type of simulator you're after, whether it's an at home, a professional, a commercial, et cetera. And it kind of is a, it's a wizard to get you the exact, all the little bits you need and just build it when you get it. So the enclosure is a full Carl's Place enclosure with their premium impact screen. Because it's a garage, it's very echoey. So I did it a little bit different. It's, it's my own custom spin on their enclosure. I used Owens Corning 703 fiberglass sound insulation. They're four foot wide by two foot tall, kind of stiff fiberglass. And what I did is I got some duck canvas, black duck canvas from Joanne Fabrics. And I just wrapped it around and I used spray glue and I made it stick on the back and I cut it so that it fit. And that's how I made my impact panels. Now, I saved a significant amount of money on this. When I priced it out for just doing the bare minimum, kind of what I have, didn't come out far, 48 inches. It's really not that far. It was like 1500 bucks for me to get to like buy them done. All in all, I spent about $250 and four or five hours of doing grandma style crafting, but it worked and it actually came out really well. Ideally, I think I would have liked to have come out a little bit further, maybe to 60-ish. So what I ended up doing was I built the Carl's enclosure, which has one inch steel pipe for a frame. And they come with these really cool connections that are easy. They slip in, you just screw them together, they hold on real tight, and then there's a black canvas that wraps around and that makes your enclosure. So I, that's up and it's behind my Owens Corning panels. That allows the sound to dampen a little bit and also keeps some sound from going into the house. So on this wall is, other side is the kitchen, and then above us is our bonus room. It's not a huge deal if some sound comes through, but I did want to make that as little as possible. I also didn't want it really echoey in here because we're gonna do a lot of filming. So I just took those and I used uh, Velcro, and I just stuck it on. I got like really heavy duty Velcro on the backside, and I stuck them on all the way up over the Carl's Place enclosure. So the frame is in there, the screen's held on really nice and tight, and then my sound panels go over that. And then up on the ceiling, what I did is the exact same thing. The enclosure is actually there, but I hit it all with an inch styrofoam insulation sheet. And then I got those, those acoustic panels, the square ones that have the little pyramids on them, 
and I glued those on. So I wrapped the outside portion that you could see of the white with, again, more of that black canvas. And then I just screwed them to the ceiling as full, like four by eight sheets. So with that, what I get is if the ball hits those cone-like uh, acoustic panels, it just bounces down. Um, it's not necessarily for sound, although it does help a little bit, but I really do feel like that when the ball hits it, it diverts it down. It doesn't make it bounce kind of goofy ways. I thought of different ways because I have so much space up there because my screen only goes up nine feet, just, on, just under nine feet. I think it's like eight, eight feet, nine inches, something like that. Um, I had a big gap there. So what, what I ended up doing was taking black canvas and I just put a sheet over to block the hole. And then I thought about putting some baffles down, but I couldn't quite figure out how to make it work. I didn't want to buy anything else. So I came up with this idea just to wrap those styrofoam panels, stick them up there, and it's actually worked out quite well. Again, I think I should have come out to 60 inches. Uh, as you can see, there's some ball marks up there. Not mine. I haven't put a single one up there yet, um, but buddies who've been here golfing, they have managed to, to hit the ceiling and leave a couple ball marks, which I'm okay with. This is a simulator, right? It's, it's not gonna be perfect forever. Um, they are somewhat hidden, so I'm okay with it. They're kind of battle scars, right? So the impact screen that I use, <clears throat> the Carl's Place premium screen has been nothing but great. It was important to me to have dual use in this. I didn't wanna just spend my time and money building a golf simulator. I wanted something that would increase the value of my home and something that my family could use. So I wanted it to be a home theater, something that we've done quite a bit already. And the screen allows a gorgeous cinema picture as well as my golf impact screen. Uh, is it as good as a cinema screen? No, but it's really close. I've come in here, put uh, animals in 4K on YouTube on the uh, screen and just sat in here for hours watching birds. It's, it's really cool to watch. It just looks so good. Um, and, and now being a couple months into this project, that screen has seen upwards of 7,000 balls and it still looks as good as it did when I pulled it out. I mean, yeah, you can see some ball marks on there, but I can't believe how well it's held up. I'm excited to see how far I can take that. So to utilize my projector, I needed a 4K aspect ratio. I couldn't quite do a four by nine. It made the screen just, it, it was too short. I didn't want to have a six and a half foot screen. So we chose to do a 16, 10 aspect ratio to give me, I still get the 4K and it's a little bit taller. It's just not the cinema width. So Carl's actually helped a lot with that. Carl's was really good at explaining to me the best screen size for my space. I highly recommend giving them a call if you have any questions, they're incredibly nice and they will not steer you wrong. <clears throat> so I did opt for the, for the frame foam panels from Carl's Place. So the entire frame is wrapped in this triangular memory foam to keep the balls from hitting it and directly impacting that steel frame. I cannot emphasize enough. If you guys get a Carl's Place enclosure, spend the extra money on the foam. I have hit that so many times and I can only imagine where those balls would have gone. For me, that's really important because I've got vehicles behind me and the last thing I need is an errant ball to hit a window or dent dent a panel. Um, so I've definitely gotten my use out of it and that's one of my favorite parts of the enclosure build. Part of what I wanted to do again was the it's the dual use system. So the projector was really important to me. Um, I could have saved a lot of money and just gotten a projector that got the job done. But because I'm going to be out here every single day, I needed something that immersed me in this unit. And so I chose to go all in. I got the BenQ LK936ST and I don't regret it one bit. It has been flawless. It was incredibly easy to set up. The picture is beautiful. It's quiet and it gets me absolutely everything I wanted. We've watched the Super Bowl in 4K. We watched the Masters, watched the Players' Championship. We've watched countless movies all kinds of other sports. It's something that's getting more use than our TV does and, and something I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of. So that is mounted to a Gaber mount that I got from B&H Photo. Um, it was very reasonable and it worked really well. It's a universal mount it, and it'll, it'll pivot always. And so it was very easy for me to get up. And then on that, I just went to the hardware store and I got some pipe that 
was threaded and it fit into both the ceiling mount and into that universal mount, which again saved me about $100 because the amount of pipe I needed was expensive if you got a projector specific mount. And then that leads us to the most important part of the entire sim and that's the, that's the simulator technology. About Golf 3-Track is what I have. The unit was very easy to set up. It just mounted directly to the ceiling. It didn't even come with directions. And the team sent it, I mounted it, they told me exactly where it needed to go. And then there's this really cool white board that's about that big with all these dots on it. And what you do is once you get it all plugged in and set up, you lay this down on your hitting area and then you call their support. And they get into your computer, that gets into the cameras and you get to watch this whole thing and you can see them looking through the camera and the cameras in the three track and you can see that board and they have you move it around and they, and they get everything calibrated and then they ask you to move, remove it and then hit a ball. And then you see that ball get hit and they check it, make sure that it's all where it's supposed to be and then you're off and playing. It's a process that probably took maybe 10 minutes start to finish and you're on the course hitting balls. Very easy process. Um, and in fact, I've had to use their support twice. I've had some issues with my mobile account and it was very quick, incredibly responsive. The support staff over at About Golf have been really wonderful to work with. Initially, we weren't sure if my space was wide enough to, to accommodate for both left-hand and right-handed golfers. So when we initially started planning this out, it was move it over to the right and it was gonna be right-hand only. Um, Luckily, the team over at About Golf made it work and we found the right spot to where I can accommodate both. And it has been extra fun because I don't get to leave any of my buddies out who are on that lefty side. On my side, I'm 6'2 and I have really long monkey arms. And so when I would hit driver off that middle impact area or the tees, like the, the normal tees are set up where you just put it in the rubber tees or whatever. Um, if I had just a janky follow through on my driver, I'd hit the wall. So I learned that if I move to the outer seam, I still get the green dot on the three track system and that gives me six more inches and plenty of room for me not to hit anything. And that really increased my confidence hitting the driver. So it was just a little bit of a learning curve, like where in that impact area can I hit to, to swing and it, it get the correct clubs. I did have a buddy over that was 6'5", and he just couldn't get it out of his head. He kept thinking he was gonna hit the wall. We stood behind him and he wasn't anywhere near it. Uh, I think he probably could have hit a driver, but sometimes when you have that wall behind you and you're expensive driver, you don't necessarily wanna hit it. So my space maybe not be ideal for everybody, but it's something to keep in mind when you're building your sim. Really kind of think about who's gonna come play, what's around you, because I never thought about that during the whole process. I just assumed, hey, I've got plenty of room. But when you get that driver in your hands, that stick is long, <laughs> especially if you're tall. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of room to spare, but it worked quite well. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about wiring the whole thing up. So there is a lot of wires involved with this. You have, you've got wires for the projector. The, the three track has multiple wires, has a power. It's got uh, ethernet that goes to it. And it's the same thing with the projector. So then what you get into is cable management. How do you make it look good? So I ran it through the walls and my outlets out here, since it was a garage made for workbenches, all the outlets were like, you know, chest high. So I blocked them out and I moved them down. If you're afraid of doing any electrical, it was a very easy process. Watch a few videos on YouTube, turn off the breakers and just get after it. It's, it's a lot easier than, than, than you may think it is. So the other thing that I wanted to do was future-proof the whole process. So with all my cords ran along the wall, it goes up through the top plate. And what I didn't want to have to do is if I needed to run something in the future, whether it was for surround sound or run another HDMI cable, I didn't want to have to recut into the wall just to get access to the holes that I drilled through the top plate. So what I did was put these blank covers on the ceiling and on the top of the wall up near the corner. So if I ever have to do that again, those plates come off and I've got perfect access. Um, I did get this really cool Klein tool that's a magnet on a handle and it has a jobby that connects to the, the wire. You tape the wire to it and you just run it up. Or, I mean, you run down, you want to go with gravity. I did it backwards because I was lazy. Um, and it, and it, what it does is it actually pulls the, the wires 
up against the insulation and the drywall, and it was $60 well spent. If you're gonna do a project like this, even if you're only gonna run a couple wires, go to Home Depot and buy it. It's worth every penny. Um, I was able to get, I ran six wires, and it took me 15 minutes, and it was flawless. I didn't lose a single one of them. So to keep things extra clean, I ran power and installed an outlet on the ceiling in between the three track and the projector so that I could have the shortest wires possible going in and plugging into that outlet instead of having to run a really long power cord through the wall. Um, taking the outlet plug part, running that through a wall, it's not recommended. It's probably gonna be so difficult that you wish you just would've put an outlet in the ceiling. Accessories that I've done, I've added my logos to the wall. I went to Sticker Mule, got some really good decals that I think look great. They're very durable, came out really well. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a graphic designer as a wife, and so she designs everything that is graphics and uh, always comes out impeccable. Um, I installed a really cool table that, that folds up so I could pull my truck in, and it's a, it comes down and it's bar height, and I've got some bar chairs that when friends come over, they could put their drinks on here. We can have some food here. We have a nice little place to hang out kind of behind where everybody is sitting. Really kind of put everything together and it made this feel like a hangout spot and not just a simulator in a garage. Highly recommend making some accommodations for your friends when they, when they come in. That's it. I think that's... All right, now for the best part, let's put it to the test. All right, that's what I'm talking about.